uh, later. Thank you. Uh, Hadrit Waldman. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sharma. And can I say what a pleasure it is to serve under your chairmanship this afternoon? And can I congratulate my right honourable friend, the member for Chelmsford, on securing this debate uh, this afternoon and for making it possible for those of us in Parliament who care so passionately about this issue uh, to make the case for every child in the world to have 12 years of quality education. Nothing could be more important. I believe nothing is less politically controversial. And as a result, Mr Sharma, it doesn't get enough debate in this place because we all agree how important it is. And so that's why I am so sincere in my <coughs> congratulations to my right honourable friend. And I've had the privilege uh, over the last few years uh, of chairing your party parliamentary group for uh, global education and recently co-chairing it and being a co-founding uh, chair of the International Parliamentary Network for Education. And then recently, when I had the honour of being elected to chair the Treasury Select Committee, I had to regrettably hand on uh, those responsibilities. And I am so, so delighted that the Right Honourable Member, the Member for Chelmsford, has embraced the opportunity that those uh, marvellous groups uh, offer to champion this incredibly important cause. Because we heard in her opening speech, which was so powerful, uh, the very important ways in which enabling every child in the world to get a quality education could make our future so much brighter. Whether it's uh, growing economies around the world, whether it's making sure that uh, we are all healthier as a world, or indeed uh, the importance of education in helping the world tackle climate change. Uh, these are really, really powerful and provable implications of us being able to uh, make sure every child gets a good education. And uh, I, I want to focus my remarks today particularly on those who suffer in their education because they have to flee conflict and particularly for uh, refugee children. And I want to thank all the families in Worcestershire who have been so good about welcoming refugees from Ukraine into their homes. We are proud to have welcomed a thousand Ukrainians into Worcestershire and uh, some half of those are children who are being educated in our local schools and I really want to thank those families but also those schools, those teachers uh, for welcoming Ukrainian children uh, into the educational settings that we have uh, in Worcestershire. But may I just make a point for the Minister to take back to raise with her colleagues at the Department of Local Government, which is that uh, there is rightly a payment to the school when they take uh, a Ukrainian refugee child. Um, if after a short period of weeks they then move to another school, that payment doesn't follow them. And that has led to a few problems. So there's an upfront lump sum that gets paid to the school that receives the child. But if they're only there for a little while, then the money doesn't go uh, any further. And so could she uh, commit to, uh, she won't be able to probably respond today, uh, um, but if uh, she could commit to writing to me about how that uh, could be tackled better um, in the system. And then I also endorse the points that were made about those poor girls in Afghanistan. There is not a day when I do not think about how terribly they are suffering from being not allowed to go to school. The cruelty, the medieval cruelty of the Taliban regime in preventing their daughters being educated. It is appalling and we must speak out whenever we can about it because it's only by keeping that focus on it and by speaking out that we can ever hope for the situation uh, to change. Uh, but it's not just girls in Afghanistan who are missing out on education. Uh, it is millions and millions of children across countries uh, all around the world, including our own. And it is uh, in particular difficult to educate children in refugee settings. And that's why I very much uh, commend the work that I saw firsthand when I was uh, the minister responsible for this budget in the international uh, sphere. Um, uh, the work that is done to help children get an education that's 
often delivered very rapidly by education cannot wait. And uh, I particularly wanted to highlight the opportunity for the UK to continue to show the leadership that it has shown uh, in this area around the world with the replenishment that is coming up of the Education Cannot Wait uh, budget. I'm sure that the Minister and her officials will be studying carefully the impact and the results that uh, that Education Cannot Wait has delivered uh, in these settings around the world. And I hope that uh, those uh, data still show uh, the very good impact and the very powerful value for money uh, that that funding does show and that the UK can therefore help <coughs> lead and crowd uh, in other countries to contribute to that important work. So, uh, Mr Sharma, in concluding my, my brief remarks on this incredibly important subject, I want to thank again my right honourable friend for securing the debate, thank the Minister uh, on behalf um, uh, of, of my uh, constituents for the work that the UK does do uh, to make the world a safer, healthier and more prosperous place by investing in education, not just in this country, but also in countries where they cannot afford to educate all their children. And can I urge the Minister to look particularly favourably on the work that's done for these children in refugee situ situations by education cannot wait. Thank you. Helen Grant. Thank you very much uh, in, indeed, Mr.